Welcome to the Unwashed Asses, episode 75, recorded for Monday, January 30th, 2019. It's a bitter cold one. Um, let's see if I can actually pull up the fucking... Alright, oh, we're up, to, we're up to two degrees, but it feels like negative 14, so... Got that going for us, which is nice. They're saying, uh... Tomorrow we should be feeling it around negative 50. Some t- some reports saying as high as negative 60. I can tell you it's it's pretty fucking cold out. Um, just finished up a bunch of outside work and you know people give the standard bullshit. Oh, thank you so much for coming out. Or I'm so sorry you had to come out and blah blah blah. Yet you know jobs keep coming in that requires to be outside for extended periods of time. Not like corporate, you know, would shut things down for safety of their workers, but eh, fuck it. Who cares? Sorry. I'm a little bit frostbitten. My my cheeks hurt. I'm bundled up. And I'm sitting in my truck, which I have on low heat so you guys don't hear the blowers. Um, just, just not in a great mood. Not in a great mood at all. Uh, so let's talk about things I don't like. <laughs> Uh, to alleviate said bad mood. Um, recently, uh, my boy came over and I'm going to preface it by saying like, since he's gotten into video games, that's been like one of the happier moments in my life. Like, oh, we have this thing that I'm like really into that we can bond over and we can do together. Um, you know, I've been waiting for it. Uh, and you know, finally last year he he really got into it with, uh, with Minecraft. And then, um, uh, we played some Sea of Thieves together and, and I understand, you know, he was a four year old. Now he's a five year old. He's very limited in his capabilities and his interests aren't really going to align with mine. It's not like I can, you know, roll him up a character in Destiny 2. Like, okay, buddy, here's an assault rifle. Let's go fucking lay it waste to some uh, dirty cabal. No, it's it's like, all right, um, I'm going to give you all the resources in Minecraft. You're probably going to go off on your own and die with them. And then you're going to stand there and yell at me that I need to do this or I shouldn't be doing that. And then... Um, get super scared when a monster comes and then, you know, cry for me to come kill it, which in its own way is adorable. Um, you know, have your five-year-old son cry almost, you know, crying. He used to actually produce tears and he's, he stopped since doing that, but, um, like, okay, I, I get to play hero. Let me ride on over there and kill this zombie or this skeleton and, and take care of you. And now he's like, he's becoming more self-sufficient, which, you know, Long term is what I want, where he'll go and attack monsters on his own. But it's that it's that catch twenty two where I want to spend as much time with him as I can and be a hero in his eyes and do all these things. But to make him a better person, uh, he has to learn how to do it on his own. So I got to kind of nudge him a bit. Um, but recently. Uh, I guess over at his mom's house, they got an Xbox as well. And I try to curate what he plays, um, try to keep it a little bit age appropriate. And also more importantly, filter out things I don't like to play. Um, Fortnite is one that springs to mind and it's something that has unfortunately crossed his lips this past visit. Um, I didn't, install it. Thankfully, he didn't bring it up any further because his current obsession is Roblox. Um, Roblox is another title that's pretty high up on my shit list as far as just terribleness. Um, For those not in the know, Roblox has been around for years, and it is the utter uh, fascination of primarily boys age 5 to, you know, 14. Um, It's... It was revolutionary in its own way in that it supported crossplay across a, you know pretty much everything. You could be on your phone, you could be on like he'll play on my tablet and I'll play on my PC and we'll play together. You can do the same thing with like Xbox or PlayStation. Um, so that's great. That's all well and good. Um, the other thing with it is Roblox. Uh, it's not really a set game; more, it's a series of games uh, designed by other players. So. 
it runs a full range of things from, you know, basic games to more complex or in-depth ones, depending on how the person, you know, wanted to design it. The problem is, at best, they're boring, unimaginative fucking slogs, and at worst, they're predatory um, and designed to steal money. That and they're littered with cheaters, uh, just just across the board. But he likes it, um, and it, I, I want to support him in his likes because I understand there will be things that I'm not really into. Like I remember growing up, you know, my dad was super into comic books and superheroes, and the, he, that's kind of what it's. I shouldn't say kind of. That's what inspired my interest in it. And uh, of course, you know, being into comics and superheroes as a kid, action figures are, you know, right there, like, oh, yeah, of course I'm going to want to get all the Batman action figures, and, oh, we have a cool X-Men animated series, let me get Wolverine and Gambit, and, you know, and they're all going to go fight bad guys together and and hang out in the Batcave at the end of the day, and so it'd always be this thing where I would try to, you know, play action figures with my dad, and he really didn't want any part of it, and, um... I always vowed, like, oh, you know, I'm never going to do that to my kid. I'm going to be uh, invested and, and want to do the things that they do and, um, you know, spend time with them. And I can kind of see where he was coming from now, um, where it's not that I don't want to spend time with with my boy and, and, and play these things with him. It's just that these things are such a test of patience. <laughs> And I will, I will sit and I will endure the best I can. But eventually, I hit a breaking point where it's like I can't handle any more of this. I just, I need a break. Otherwise, I'm going to scream. And it's not because you know I, I don't enjoy spending time with you or, or I don't like you know doing these these activities with you. It's just this is a shit game. Like we've got to cultivate your taste a bit because this is just fucking awful. But I, I get it, you know, he's he's limited. Um, there's only so much that, like, he can do or he can grasp. And he's already miles ahead of where I was as a kid. Um, I can't imagine playing 3D games and, and working two analog sticks. You know, I, I had an SNES controller at that age. And it was a D-pad and four buttons. I didn't even use the shoulder buttons. And I was still having a rough go of it. Um, so I try to, you know, we're going to limit what what you do, um, you know, like we, we have this little Pac-Man game console, which has all these old Atari classics on there. And he likes some of those, but it makes me realize, okay, well, these games are shit. Um, they're not good, but they're technically limited. They could only do so much with them. We have the, you know, the Nintendo and, uh, SNES classic and they're better, but they're too hard for him and in a way they're kind of too hard for me because this is when games were designed to be quarter eaters you know for arcades and it doesn't it doesn't uh translate well to the instant gratification we have um now in our current generation of games um they're rough it's really rough playing them and it's frustrating i i know especially when we're trying to get, get like two player games going on the super nintendo we cycle through, like, Mario Kart's always a huge hit. He loves it. Um, we'll do Mario Kart, but then it's like, all right, I can only handle so much of Mario Kart because there's maybe 10 tracks to play. The AI is super aggressive on the harder levels, and uh, it's it's hard to follow because it's essentially a 2D plane trying to be rendered as 3D. It's, it's bad. Um, we go over to, like, Donkey Kong, and that's fucking rough especially when you're trying to carry a five-year-old um we go over to contra which is notoriously difficult it's just it's like trying to find a nice even middle ground is is hard but when it comes to games he wants to play it's they're brain dead easy and there's there's no real reward for it so case in point with like roblox there's a handful of games he's really really into um the, the first one be uh, The Floor is Lava. Now, just by telling you the title, you understand what's happening in the game. Um, everybody loads into the game, and every round is a different map. It cycles through maybe a dozen maps. The idea is to climb up as high as you can before the lava rises and, and kills you. Easy enough. 
Easy enough. Pretty straightforward. But, like, and this is probably the best one of the Roblox games that we've played. Um, the problem with it, like many other Roblox titles, is that it's literally, not with microtransactions, but with things designed to take money, um, to cheat the system. So, um, Roblox uses these, this currency called Robux, where, you know, like five bucks will get you 500 Robux. That's probably not right, but you get the idea. And every game, because I imagine the people who design these games get a little bit of cut. So whatever gamers or players spend inside these mini games, whoever designed that mini game will get a cut of whatever they spend. So it'll be things like, oh, well, you can have admin powers or you can have, you know, a grappling hook that lets you climb up to the top right away or you can have a hang glider and, and all this other shit, not to mention, you know, like clothes for your character or, you know, health items that help you re regain health or let you move faster. This all costs money. And for things like, you know, Android or Xbox, you probably already have a credit card linked. And so with kids, they have this pop-up right in the middle of the screen. And it's happened with my boy quite a few times where it'll get right to the point where he's a, he knows not to spend money on it, but it gets right to that point where it's like, just press one more button and yeah, you've immediately spent $5. And it's so shitty, and it's so predatory, and it just reeks of the problem that we have with mobile games right now. Um, and I, I understand his frustration, because he's tempted. He really, you know, he wants to make the game easier. He wants to try this new cool item. And the the games are designed in a way that, okay, they're not nearly going to be as fun as they could be, because the idea is for them to make money first, rather than have engaging gameplay. Um, the other one is, uh, Muscle Beach, where the idea is your, your character start, starts off pretty much as a stick figure. You're on, uh, a recreation of Venice Beach. And the idea is to repeatedly click a mouse button over and over and over and over and over. Like, thousands of times to get your character big and strong. And the bigger and stronger you are, the more you can beat up other players. And the more you can beat up other players... Um, where like every three minutes they'll have what's called a brawl that rolls around. You sign up for the brawl, you beat up the other players. When you beat up the other players, you get gems. Now, gems don't give you a whole fuckload of anything. Um, this is kind of part of my other problem is they're trying to incentivize you with things that don't really give you anything. Um... Usually there's two currencies in any modern game. You know, you have your real-world currency where you can buy things outright. And then you have your in-game currency where you can earn it uh, slower and then buy things that way. That way, you know, you can't say the game's pay to win. Everybody's kind of on the same playing field. It's just a matter of, you know, how much do you value your time. Um, these games don't have that. So, like, Muscle Beach has gems that you get from winning these competitions... But all you do are buy skin effects that don't do anything. At least I haven't figured it out. And I want to say that I'm smarter than a game designed for, you know, nine-year-olds. But they don't do anything. Um, and when the entire objective is just going to, you know, become bigger and stronger than everybody else, of course it's going to be like, all right, we'll use these boosts to make your character stronger and faster, quicker. And it's just so fucking boring because literally all you're doing is clicking the mouse over and over again thousands of times. And it's to the point where I almost want to macro it. Like, all right, well, we'll run a basic script. Like, you know, just keep hitting this input and leave it run overnight. But again, it's about spending time with my kid. And while the game may be terrible, I'm we're building those memories. You know, we're, we're setting that feeling of safety and trust and, you know, doing so much more important work where I have to look past what's happening in Roblox and all the shitty predatory things that are in it and, and just hope that he can realize, all right, this is garbage and it's time to go play a real game like, you know, Destiny or something that I like. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's bad. And anybody else that has to play it, I feel for you. I really, really do. Because it's awful. It's terrible. And 
and I don't ever want him to feel that I don't want to spend time with him or play a game with him because of how bad a game is. I will suck it up because he's far more important to me than, you know, me having a bad time playing a game for a half hour. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just a thing where we need more structure. Like, we'll play this game for a little bit, but we'll also do this thing. And I guess we already do have that because it's a thing. Right? Well, let's take a break from the games and maybe learn something. Let's play it on Blue Planet 2 and learn about the bobbit fish and manta rays and all this other cool stuff. Um, oh, I'm too hard on myself. I do a good job. I do a good job. But that's going to wrap it up. That's 15 minutes. We did it. We made it. Woo! I want to punch myself in the face. Ugh, God, today sucks. Today sucks. But, um, yeah. So, again, this year, uh, tell a friend. That's all we ask. We want to make the show grow. So, tell somebody. They can get it wherever they get their po- their podcasts already. The Unwashed Asses, or TUA, if it's uh, iTunes friendly. Uh, and, of course, if you want to go above and beyond, pitch in a buck or two a month. Uh, that helps keep things going even further. And, of course, if there are any comments, questions, criticisms, concerns, complaints, or criticisms, I might have already said that, you can always write the show. You know, if you want to bitch about Roblox with me or you want to talk about something else, uh, theunwashedasses at gmail.com. Again, theunwashedasses at gmail.com. Just drop us a line and uh, we'll read it here on the show. But that's going to do it. See ya. Need an outro.